and I did that. This female clothing reseller YouTuber guru, what else did he call me? Oh, I did that. So you wanna be an online reseller. One of the biggest barriers to entry in online reselling is knowing what items to pick up, what they sell for, what price point you need to buy those items at, what the sell through rate is. Wanting to sell vintage online is amazing, but you do have to know what vintage to look for. For that reason, I am breaking down 41 of my most recent sales in today's video to tell you guys where I sourced it, how much I paid for it, how long it took to sell, and why I sourced that particular item. As always, you are absolutely guaranteed to learn something in today's video. Welcome back to the channel, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Rachel Strickland, and I am a full-time reseller. I buy undervalued items in my area at thrift stores, estate sales, yard sales, anywhere where a used item is being sold and maybe, again, undervalued, and then I flip those items online for a massive profit. This channel is dedicated to showing you how to do the exact same thing so that you, too, can be employed as a full-time reseller if you choose. Today, we're dissecting 41 of my most most recently sold items. I mainly sell vintage hard goods. If it is something they are not making anymore, if it is wood, metal, or glass, that is what I am automatically drawn to. My goal in today's video is to equip you with enough knowledge that when you go out to your own estate sales, yard sales, thrift stores, you too know what to pick up to flip for a profit. This channel and the information here is always free, so if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that thumbs up, commenting, or sharing this video. It helps small YouTubers like myself more than you know when you do those things. Let's get straight into it. First up is this awesome vintage phone. When I'm sourcing something like this, I'm definitely looking for a rotary dial versus push buttons. And there are certain brands that can bring more money than others. Not every vintage phone is worth a lot, but there are a few exceptions and a few major bolos. I knew this one would bring me about $20. I had it listed at $29. I took a best offer of 20 and I paid $4 for this phone at an estate sale auction. I've had it listed for about eight months. I don't think that they have an extremely strong sell through rate unless they are a rarer brand or color. If you can find a red one or pink one, those usually sell a lot faster and for a bit more money. This was basic black. It was a little dirty, needed some rehabilitation. So I'm happy to have sold it within about an eight month window. Next up is an item you may have never seen before. These vintage shoe covers were actually pinned to a coat that I bought. I decided to break those up and sell them as two separate listings just in case the person that bought the coat was not the same size with the feet and therefore needing the same size shoe covers. There is not a huge call for these. I paid $3 for the coat with these shoe covers. They took about a year to sell though and I did take a best offer. I had them listed for $15 with free shipping and lately I've been trying to liquidate and clear out all of the clothing from my eBay. Anything that is not vintage or designer, I've been trying to get rid of in the way of clothing in my inventory on eBay. So I let these go for $9.99 with free shipping. If you followed my channel for any amount of time, you may remember my massive cookbook haul. I was at an estate sale and after they had done choice of one, choice of five, trying to sell off tables full of vintage cookbooks from one woman's collection, they finally decided they were gonna auction all of them together. I couldn't stand seeing them go for $20. I bid 25. I wanna say that's about where I landed. I paid $25 to what amounted to 432 cookbooks. If you could have seen the look on my family's face when I pulled 432 cookbooks into our living room. This one sale almost made my money back, $23.99 and free shipping on this one cookbook from that haul. And you can only imagine the amount of money I made long-term selling 432 cookbooks. There were a few pretty high dollar cookbooks in there that went for almost $100 a piece. And on the low end, some of the cookbooks were about $10 cookbooks. Some cookbooks to look for, believe it or not, the vintage spiral bound, and I'm talking spiral plastic bound church lady cookbooks. The church cookbooks that are a fundraiser for First Baptist Church, I'm not kidding people are searching eBay for the old church lady cookbooks if you can find an old cookbook that is handwritten recipes in it even better cookbooks I would avoid would be anything with the celebrity tied to it those cookbooks just sat for me even when I bundled up I ended up donating a few of those but if you ever have the opportunity to buy 432 of something for $25 and you have the space to store it I would strongly suggest you to consider that I love any type of vintage that they're not making any 
any more of or they're not making it quite like this. And for me, women's gloves, be them formal gloves or driving gloves or winter gloves, definitely falls into that category. These gloves were opera length. It's important to know what length the gloves are that you're selling, especially if they're vintage. And then it's also important to know the size. If you don't know the size, then put a tape measure. If you set off the glove, put a tape measure across where the knuckles would be so that someone is able to see how wide that part is. That's how you measure a glove. I try to source gloves for two to three dollars a pair. These were no exception. I bought them in a bundle. I think I got like 20 pair of gloves that day from another estate sale auction and I took a best offer on these. I had them listed for $34.99 plus four dollars shipping and they sold for $18. Extremely easy to ship. I will pick up vintage gloves all day long and this isn't the only pair of vintage gloves you're going to see in today's what sold. Here's an item I definitely didn't get rich off of. I sold this vintage look-alike reproduction toy slot machine. It was uh, new in the package with the instructions. I did test it out. I tried it out. I may have even shipped this thing with the batteries, but I paid $6 for it. I sold it for $19.99 with free shipping because that's where comps were on it. And the buyer was in California. So a lot of my profits there were eat up in shipping. I think at the end of the day, I made like $3 off of this, but it was fun. And my kids got to play with it too while we were testing it. Items like this that are reproduction obviously don't hold the same value that true vintage items hold. That being said, this one was in giftable condition right at Christmas time. I knew it would be a quick flip and I did make a little bit of money off of it. I told you guys that I am liquidating clothing, especially like any type of mall brands or things like that out of my store and this skirt is no exception. I have had this thing listed for a while and by a while I mean probably two years. There are very few items in my store that have been listed quite as long as this skirt has been listed. I picked this up in a thrift store bag sale so it probably amounted to about 20, 25 cents in this skirt. One piece of advice that I will give new resellers though is just because it's cheap or even free doesn't mean it deserves a place in your house because that's not free at all. It's taking up space in your inventory. It's taking up space in your family's home. If like me, you work from home, and you really need to sit down and figure out the true cost of an item like this before you let what amounted to being, I took a $7 offer. So a $7 sale to sit in your house for two years. If I had it to do over again, I would not have picked this skirt up. It's Worthington brand. That's a JCPenney's brand. Now it is a women's size 24, which is exceptional to find any type of good quality plus size clothing. Plus size clothing is typically a good seller, but obviously not always. Skirts in general have kind of been a miss for me in my reselling career. Um, and I've heard other resellers that dabble in clothing or sell exclusively clothing say the same thing, that skirts are a really hard sale. So ensure that the sales price is there on your comps and that the sell through rate is there on your comps before sourcing a lot of skirts. I bought these pretty vintage Christmas lights for $3 recently at an estate sale. They were in the basement of the estate sale and this place was packed. I mean like 2,000 square feet of vintage Christmas. So when I found these lights for $3, I said, absolutely, I'm gonna pick these up. They were not even listed 30 days and just sold for $34.99 plus $8.50 shipping. This is the prime example of something that they're not making anymore. And if they are, then they're making a reproduction, cheaper version of it. When you list an item that lights up, be sure that you show it lighting up in the listing because these things were gorgeous when they were lit up. So I included that as well. And that's why I think I was able to make more than 10 times my money on this within 30 days. Department 56 is a really good brand to look for. That being said, a lot of the items are not 100, 200, $400 items. In my last video, I covered the Department 56 that is worth picking up that'll sell for $1,000 to $2,000 per house. This one, however, I bought in an estate sale. I bought an entire collection of Department 56, like an entire village for just $50. I have sold all but one of the houses and one accessory that's like a Starbucks cart. That's all I have left. And this library sold for $49.95 plus the buyer paid $20 shipping. If you have the space for Department 56, pick it up. Those are large boxes. And if you're not afraid to ship breakables, all of the Department 56 I picked up was in its original styrofoam enclosures. So that made shipping an absolute breeze. I have an excellent video on how to ship breakables, kind of a fail-proof way. I'll leave the link to that video in the description. I love to sell vintage Levi's, but believe it or not, some vintage Levi's can be faked. They are counterfeit. If you'd like a video on how I authenticate vintage Levi's jeans, let me know in the 
comments. I'd be happy to make that video. I authenticated these, listed them. They sold inside of probably 10 days for $31.45. When I pick up vintage Levi, I'm looking for that paper tag. I'm looking for them to be 100% cotton. And even though everyone will tell you that the tapered leg is out, I am looking for that classic mom jean high-waisted taper leg fit. It still sells. It's always going to sell. This next sale was a charity option and I have to give a huge shout out and thank you to my friends Red Dirt Picker. Brian actually donated this autographed John Travolta photo and there were a few other um, John Travolta ephemera and collectible items within this auction. Brian Red Dirt Picker donated this for free because he knew that I was raising money for St. Jude. A few days ago I ran the Memphis St. Jude Marathon and my goal was to raise $500 through the sale of this photo and everyone helping out on Instagram and online, I surpassed that and raised almost $600. All of the runners on race day collectively raised $14 million. That is amazing. St. Jude is a place that is close to my heart. The families of the patients, the children at St. Jude never receive a bill for their treatment. So raising money for them is actually life-saving. A subscriber and a great friend of mine, Christopher Nutter, actually bought this. It sold for $44.00 and 100% of that went straight to St. Jude. I'm gonna leave Brian Red Dirt Pickers link in the description below as well as Christopher Nutter, the buyer of this. I will leave the link to his eBay store. If you guys are interested in supporting people who have supported charity in such a tremendous way, then be sure to check out those links in the description. Here's a Christopher Radko ornament. Obviously not a surprise that Christopher Radko is selling this time of year. You guys know it's one of my favorite brands to pick up at Christmas time and to always be on the lookout for. This happy Santa in an over size hat. It was listed at $67, but I did take a best offer of $61. Again, not afraid to ship items like this because I know how to ship breakables. I've shipped some of these blown glass ornaments all the way to Hawaii. Be sure you look at that how to ship breakables video. Here's a fun item. Fun fact, I've never seen Caddyshack, but when I saw this, is he a gopher? Is he a groundhog? When I saw this at my thrift store for $3, I knew I had to pick it up. I crossed my fingers that it worked because I didn't have any batteries on me. So it may be a good idea if you're just getting into reselling, bring a stash of batteries along in your purse or your fanny pack or whatever you thrift with, maybe even just your pocket, so that you can check out electronics like this and ensure that they work. I honestly didn't even look up comps on this whenever I bought it. I know that Jimmy products always sell well, and this one sure did. It sold for $38.99 plus $10 shipping off of my $3 investment. I love sales like this because they blow people's mind all the time. This is a plain black t-shirt. It did not even last 24 hours in my store. I listed it at $27.49 plus $5 shipping and it was out the door no sooner than I listed it. I picked it up because it's single stitch, it's blank, and the size was fantastic. Vintage clothing runs small, so if I can find a men's extra large in a t-shirt, I know that that's gonna go quickly. I did include the word blank in my title as a keyword because when searching for vintage t-shirts oftentimes people will search blank. Again I just love sales like this because I think it's something that a lot of people are looking right by but that was almost a $30 sale and I paid two dollars for the t-shirt. Here's one of three of this type of sale that I bought at the same estate sale I got the previous Christmas lights. I found some Christmas lights that didn't work and I decided to try to negotiate and see what I could get them for. I think I had either four or five strands and she charged me $4 for everything. When I got them home, I started checking bulbs. I just could not get these things to work. So instead I removed all of the covers. That is what you see in this. So this is a non-working, essentially broken set of Christmas lights. I sold just the covers, just the tips for $14.99 plus shipping. And you're gonna see two more of these sales in the same video. If something is broken, find a way to part it out so that you can still save the vintage. Again, this is something they're just not making any more of. I almost had seller's remorse over selling this vintage Mattel car wash and car mechanic shop. I found this for only $2 at my thrift store. It's 1970s, it's Mattel, it's Hot Wheels. I absolutely had to have that. Folks that grew up in the 70s and 80s are at the point in their life now where they have more luxury or disposable income that they can buy back their childhood 
hood and I'm sure that's exactly what the buyer on this one did. I was not afraid to charge $20 shipping. I listed it at $40 because my son loved this. He was playing with it. He really liked it and I thought, you know what? I'm going to list it and then maybe he can still play with it for a little while. No, it didn't even last a week. The buyer was all in at $60 off of my $2 investment. One thing I do want to mention is when I was looking up comps for this, I noticed several of the pieces that were missing in other sets and I was sure to showcase that those pieces were present in my own listing and I think that's what helped to sell mine faster. I am not advocating you picking up souvenir spoons. That being said, this one just sold for $9.90 plus shipping. I actually bought an entire bag, ended up being about 75 spoons for around $10. This one nearly makes my money back and I've sold almost all of the others. Souvenir spoons in general, they're not worth picking up. They honestly aren't. Again, unless you can find them in bulk like that. The caveat to that being sterling silver souvenir spoons. Please pick those up. I sold one once for over $200 with a Native American face on the head of the spoon. Sterling silver souvenir spoons are almost always worth picking up if the price is right. Recently on YouTube, someone said that I'm a clothing reseller, which I thought was so hilarious. If you've been here any amount of time, you know how little clothing I sell in comparison with other items. Exhibit A, this vintage ice pick. Who's picking up a vintage ice pick to sell? I am, and maybe in the future you are, because this one didn't last too long. Uh, I would say I had this listed eight months maybe. That is kind of a long time, but I didn't want this thing to end up in a landfill. It sold for $11.90 plus shipping. I love that the handle was wooden. I love that the ice pick part was metal. Again, just looking for those quality materials, items, from yesteryear that will last for decades to come. Here's another great item that only a true clothing reseller would pick up, a stuffed taxidermy pheasant. Do you guys remember me picking this up at the thrift store for $1? I'm not kidding, $1. I knew it was worth more than that. The top thing I've been asked about this sale recently is I thought taxidermy wasn't allowed on eBay. I will tell you in the past, I would have passed something like this, but I have friends that have sold taxidermy. So I looked into it and I realized it's only certain taxidermy that is not allowed on eBay. So ensure that whatever taxidermy you pick up, there are active listings, there are active souls, and it is allowed on eBay. If you want me to cover that in a future video, what exactly eBay's rules and guidelines are on that, I'd be happy to. But I do know that this pheasant was allowed and guys, I had it listed for $200 for about 30 days. Someone made me an offer of $155 plus $30 shipping. They lived in Texas, wasn't too far away. I knew the shipping was going to be reasonable. The shipping was a beast though. I took their offer of $155 and this thing probably took me 40 minutes to package. It arrived there safe it has been delivered and I did that. This female clothing reseller YouTuber guru, what else did he call me? Oh, I did that. This next one is actually a sale of my son's. He has less than 10 cents in all of these Xbox games and just sold Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell for $4.99 plus $4.75 shipping. As a rule, I don't really pick up video games unless I plan on selling them to my son. He's 17 years old and he sells across all of my platforms on all of my accounts. I am responsible obviously for everything that he does because they are my accounts, but he's not old enough to have his own account. It is very important to me that my my kids know how to make their own money for themselves self-employed. For that reason, I will provide him with shipping supplies. I will provide him with all the guidance and I will sell him merchandise like this whenever I see it because he's typically at school whenever I find the really good deals. I don't give him the merchandise. I do make him pay his own cost of goods for these things. But again, he only had 10 cents into this game. So I would consider this one a win. Here's a fun little vintage craft for a sweatshirt, a sequin art piece. I actually took an offer of five dollars plus shipping on this so the buyer was all in closer to ten bucks i'm glad that i saved this one for the landfill but another pretty bread and butter not getting rich off of a sale like this eileen fisher is a great brand but it is also a brand that a lot of resellers know about it's equivalent you know free people or another brand that is heavily saturated in the resale market so you need to have an outstanding eileen fisher piece that is made out of um like a luxury material or something something to truly be worth a lot. I've had this one listed over a year and just took a best offer of $20. Absolutely get it out of my store plus shipping. I used to pick up brands like this a lot because I would watch YouTube 
channels and um, a lot of the resellers that I was watching would talk about the same brands and so we were all out picking up those same brands and when that happens the market kind of falls out it's why I prefer to pick up vintage because if I tell you to look for taxidermy pheasants what are the chances that everyone watching this video is gonna find a taxidermy pheasant and we're suddenly gonna flood the market probably pretty slim to none but if I tell you to pick up free people or lululemon or eileen fisher everyone watching this video probably has access to those brands so if we all go pick them up we will flood the market and that's how you get stuck with pretty basic mall brands for a year again i am liquidating the clothing out of my store i'm just not interested in pursuing something like that i it's been a long time since i've picked up and sourced those items but i'm hanging on to pieces like this that have been listed in my store for well over 12 months and i just want them gone i want that space for really cool vintage hard goods in walks exhibit b this sports bra now luckily there was no cost of goods here this was a sports bra that i bought for me and uh i sold it for five dollars with free shipping yeah five dollars i just wanted to get rid of it and i thought if i break even i did not break even in fact after the ebay fees and the shipping label i am negative 13 cents on this sale and you might think rachel why would that be a sale worth even talking about first of all full transparency on this channel i'm going to tell you guys about the 150 $55 pheasant, but I'm also going to tell you about the sports bra I lost money on. Secondly, sales bring in more sales. When you have a sale, that has to do something to the eBay algorithm and to your store placement, and it bumps you up. And then if you're anything like me, and I had to cancel a few sales recently, you need more sales that go positively, even if you lose 13 cents on them, just to raise your metrics so that the few that you had to cancel, or maybe if you had a late shipment or something, those kind of balance each other out and the percentage of the ones that go wrong is lower and you can maintain your top rated seller status. I am not all about putting adjectives in the title of eBay listing, but this one really was stunning. Don't you think she's stunning? I had to include it. I picked this up for $4 at my local thrift store and it is a an armless cape you guys it is made out of wool it is lined in satin it was handmade in memphis everything about this is regal southern excellence of it reminds me of like the jackie onassis era it is absolutely gorgeous there were no comps i made up my own price of 119 dollars, and within two weeks this thing sold for my full list price plus ten dollars shipping from my four dollar investment don't be afraid of vintage clothing that is unbranded especially if it is really high quality. You can find comps that are just similar, maybe a different brand, or shoot for the moon in your pricing. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? You have to reduce your pricing, buy at a low enough cost that you're guaranteed to make a profit, and I don't think you'll ever be sorry for picking up unbranded vintage clothing. Here's another pair of 100% cotton vintage Levi's. Now, I had these listed at $42.95, but I did take a best offer of $35. I feel like $35 is a really fair price for Levi, especially Levi's made in the 90s. Anything older than that, you may be able to command a higher price, or if you find selvage edge denim or something really special about it. But these were basic 90s, 100% cotton, and a $35 sale, I feel really good about that. Vintage Levi's like this are available around me, anywhere between two and four dollars at my thrift store, and almost no one here sees the value in them. I would pick these up all the way to maybe five to seven dollars if I were you, if they were in good enough condition. You can tell the weather is getting cold everywhere. I sold another really cool vintage coat. This one I didn't really make a whole lot of money off of. I paid $5 for this coat. It has mink fur trim. While I had it listed for $49 with free shipping, I've had it listed for well over a year. It is seasonal, so that's to be expected if your seasonal item doesn't sell this winter. It may take until next winter. That being said, I do sell a lot of leather coats to Australia during our summer, but I took an offer of $35 with free shipping on this coat. So again, not turning a huge profit, but releasing a large item out of my inventory for sure. I'm super proud of this sale, you guys. I was at an estate sale and they were auctioning off magazines. I was not interested in the prices people were paying for these large 1950s life magazines but when the discarded ones were all on the table and the auctioneer said who will give me ten dollars for this entire table again this is i always get suckered into buying the whole table of stuff of magazines 
I raised my hand, no one bid against me. I bought an entire table of magazines and I they gave me this piece of luggage to take them in. Those magazines were so profitable for me. I had two whatnot auctions. Um, they amounted to about $800 in sales off of most of those. And then I found an extremely rare magazine that I sold for $500 and it sold within an hour of listing it over on eBay. So I'm at $1,300 off this $10 investment. And then I sell the suitcase that they gave me to take them home in for another $50 plus $30 shipping. I will tell you it was almost all of $30 to ship something like that. Vintage suitcases are really cool to source, especially when thrift stores practically are giving them away, but they are beast to ship and they are very costly. So keep that in mind, especially when you're pulling up comps and you see that one might have sold for $100. Did they offer free shipping? How much was the shipping on that? Essentially the value of this shipped was $80. So if it had sold more locally and it only cost me $20, I would have made a higher profit. But just when the items are really big like that, consider the cost that the buyer pays on your comps for shipping as well. I'm in the central part of the country, which is a huge advantage geographically because it, it costs me a lot less to send things, especially via FedEx, to either coast. Here's another sale where I am just trying to get rid of mall brand clothes. These are kids Nike shorts. These were given to me. I did not and would not source something like this, but I did sell them for $5 plus $5 shipping. Here's another sale I am super proud of and it's not too shabby for a clothing reseller. When I was at the estate sale, I saw this silver reed case. I have no idea what silver reed is, but I did have my phone and I did have eBay with me there. I pulled up comps and realized that this was a vintage knitting machine. When we got to this item, no one else knew what it was. No one else had ran comps on it. And the auctioneer said, I'm not even sure what this case is, but who will give $50? I raised my hand immediately. And I've had a lot of people say, you probably could have got it for less, but I didn't want anyone else to get suspicious, to start bidding against me. I raised my hand at $50 and nobody bid on this. I have had it listed probably five or six months and just sold it for $725 plus $30 shipping. It was super heavy, very big, and cost every bit of that $30 to ship. To have turned my $50 investment into $725 sale though, I was absolutely elated at that. If something is in a case and it's shut, I know it could be tempting to just walk right by, but just run the brand name, just run the comp. As my friend Christopher always says, look everything up. I always aim at saving the vintage and I will do so even if it means selling what some people consider trash. I was in an estate sale, bought a GI Joe toy, paid way up for it, but when I got home, I realized that half of the little kid's toy box was inside this GI Joe box, including some broken toys. Among those broken toys was a 1969 Redline Hot Wheels. Well, kind of. Just the body and the rear axle with those Redline tires. 1968 and 69 was the first edition of those Redlines, I believe. So I knew I had to list this thing. I did for $12 with free shipping and it sold. A sale like that is another prime example. If they're not making it anymore, if a collector or a restorer could possibly need that part that you have, don't throw it away. Keep the vintage, save the vintage, and list that online. Here's another set of those broken Christmas lights that I just pulled the tips off of. Sold for, again, $14.99 plus shipping. This is the only retail arbitrage piece that you're gonna see and probably the only one in several of my recent what sold videos. I'm not really big on retail arbitrage because I feel like for me anyway, in my area, with retail arbitrage, I do well to double or triple my money. And with vintage hard goods, it's easy to make 10 times your money. That being said, I only paid a dollar for this belt at Walmart when they were doing a massive in-store clearance. There were so many items that were only a dollar. I picked this one up and it just sold on eBay for $11.90 plus shipping. Here's another Department 56 house that sold for $32.95 plus shipping. This is a really cool sale. Shout out to my friend Christopher again because he gifted me this mannequin that you see in a lot of my videos and maybe she made this thing sell because she just looks so happy in what's truly a funeral hat. I was at the St. Louis bins and found essentially an entire collection of vintage church lady hats. I scooped those things up because at that bins, it's about $1.99 a pound. These weigh next to nothing. 
I sold a few of them for $50 a piece and this one sold for $30 plus shipping. I do have a video on how to ship hats. If you're scared about something like that, you just need to ensure you don't lay it on the brim, flip it upside down inside of an inner box. Always try to float the hat to where the brim isn't really touching anything. You're gonna need a big box though. We're gonna need a bigger box. I told you guys that my son sells on my accounts and this is actually one of his sales. Someone asked to group two items that I had listed on eBay together and they just so happened to both be listings of Delos. One was a set of Valve stem caps. The other was this vintage Pokemon the card game Blastoise card. I would look at a card like this and have no idea the value but he knew its value and listed it at $85. We ended up throwing in the Valve stem caps essentially. The buyer paid shipping on everything, left us positive feedback and was super happy. $85 for one Pokemon card. That's a niche that he knows way more about than I do. I love vintage fabrics in fashion and this scarf is wool. I am a sucker for vintage wool. This one sold for $9 plus shipping. It did take a while to sell. I listed it and maybe at the tail end of last winter sometime close to a year ago. So it did take a little while. I had to drop the price on it and uh, in an effort to liquidate clothing I put this one um, on a pretty massive clearance nine dollars and it was out the door here's another pair of valve stem caps that Dello sold he sells these for $9.99 with free shipping they are kind of a retail arbitrage item we picked these up at the Amazon bin store he sells a lot more new items than what I do clearly my items are mainly vintage but that just goes to show you there's more than one way to succeed in reselling and you should sell what you're passionate about he's really into automotive at the moment so these valve stem caps definitely fit the bill of what he's passionate about he got a ton of them all at once so he listed just below market value to try to liquidate those and sell them very quickly. Another vintage wool scarf sold. This one sold for only $9 with free shipping. This was my highest price broken Christmas light sale. These sold for $19.99 with $4 shipping. The style was a little bit different than the other sets that sold. The others were like a tulip design and these were more of an atomic star. I have some of these that work on my own Christmas tree, not this tree, but the tree in the last video. And I I think they're absolutely incredible. Beautiful lights, just the tips again, 20 bucks plus shipping. Only three items left. You're gonna be so sad when this is over. This is a really great time. If you've learned anything that you should pick up in this video, please hit that like button. Be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss videos like this in the future. Consider sharing this video with another reseller friend of yours or someone you know who has been looking for a unique way to be self-employed. Here's another pair of vintage gloves. I think I got these in the same lot there's been more than one estate sale that I've picked up vintage women's gloves again always picking them up two to three dollars a pair this pair sold for twenty dollars plus four dollars shipping love love to sell women's vintage gloves I don't sell a ton of toys mainly because of the story I told you earlier that when I bring them home my son wants to keep them this actually came out of his closet though I think I sourced it it ended up in his closet and then I got it back when he was done with it I sold this vintage Woody doll yes Toy Story is already vintage for $17.99 plus shipping not in perfect condition but he did have his hat the last sale to talk about today is yet another pair of vintage Christmas slides these are like like the green ones that sold but they're white little pearl bulbs I listed these again at $34.99 plus shipping. An offer came in pretty quickly and it just so happened to be a day that I wasn't making a whole lot of sales. So I took an $18 offer on these. Knowing that the green one sold pretty quickly for $35, I realized I probably could have held out and made closer to my list price off of these, but I'm still glad to have sold something that I only had $3 invested in for $18 plus shipping within days of listing it. I think that's kind of the name of the game. Sometimes you get all of the pie and sometimes you just get a piece of the pie, but you are in the selling business, not the storage business. Do not get attached to these items. Do not get emotionally attached to these items. Your job is to curate a closet, a store of really cool items that you're passionate about, that you love to list, you love to sell, and you love to ship and get those items out the door. Turn a profit, rinse and repeat. I thank you as always so much for watching this video, guys. God bless and remember, treat your business like your business.